Hi, my name's Pam. I'm an alcoholic. My sobriety date is April 3rd, 1987. I have a home group, last chance. I have a sponsor. I sponsor other women. So just a little bit. I've lived in Seattle since I was six years old when my parents got divorced. So I'm an old time Seattleite. But I spent summers with my dad over in Quilsane with my brother. And, and I, uh, my parents had taverns. We had a country tavern and a city tavern. So, so I've grown up around drinking all my life. And I'm not saying that's why I'm an alcoholic. But what happened to me, um, Christmas of 86, my kids invited me to come back to Kentucky. They were in college. And my son was uh, 21. My daughter was 18. And I, um, and this was the days before 9-11. So I had, um, I know it sounds crazy. This is before the uh, personal water bottle. So I had an old flex shampoo bottle that I used. I rinsed out really good and filled it with whiskey. And that's what I drank out of. And I had a baggie of pot. So I, I flew back to, um, to Kentucky. They were in Bowling Green and was there for Christmas. And I had a good buzz on all the time. I'd, I'd been drinking since I was um, in high school and, and their dad was a sailor, but we were divorced. And I, I, um, I always considered myself a companion drinker, but that Christmas I was, I had a good buzz on at midnight mass on Christmas Eve. And I was holding my first grandchild, Joe, on my shoulder. And Joe was four months old. And it came over me that if I didn't drink, maybe Joe would have a better life. And looking back over, you know, over those years, I don't know. At that time, I was, it was the first time I thought I was an alcoholic. And, and I, and I, I had been drinking alcoholically since I was in high school when I was 15. And I drank every weekend. And I, I married my kid's dad when I was 18, because the idea of going to college just, was too much for me. And I, I found out later, and here's a spoiler alert. When I, um, I got sober, I, um, I started going to meetings every day. And when I, um, I was complaining about my crappy city job, I, you know, I, I told them, you know, that I hated my job and they said, well, what skills do you bring? And I, I said, well, not much, you know, my good personality. And they said that wasn't enough. So I started going to community college nights and 12 years later, working that crappy city job and um, going to school, I got a bachelor's degree. So I, I retired from that job and I, um, I went to graduate school and became a high school teacher. And I found out that I graduated 769th out of my class of 814 in high school. That's pretty sad because I, I did okay in college and I actually was uh, Phi Beta Kappa. But, you know, I, I'm going to back up a little and say that when I came into Alcoholics Anonymous, I thought life was just something to be endured. You know, I my parents did the best they can, but they were alcoholics. And and, um, and, you know, they passed away. My mom was 54 when she died and my dad was 60. And I have four younger brothers who, um, you know, we all drank. We, could, we were allowed to drink at home if we could, uh, you know, buy our own booze. And we, we smoked dope in the basement. And it was, um, it, it was pretty chaotic. I, I just, you know, I, I wish that I could say, that I had a, a great moral compass, and and I do I do have to say that I I went to um, you know I was in Assumption Parish and I went to mass every Sunday, and I when I was fifteen I was compl uh, complaining to Father Felix, my parish priest, about all the work I had to do, and and he just went over to his bookshelf and got a you know, got that a book about the life of St. Francis of Assisi. And I thought, well, you know, he's just trying to, um, he's just trying to, to get me, you know, my mind off all my problems. And I read about St. Francis and it wasn't until 25 years later when I came into AA when I was 40 that I realized and, and heard the third step prayer that he was just trying to get me out of myself, that I was, 
self-centered. I, all I thought about was me, me, me. And when I worked the steps and I started going to step meetings, you know, when I first got sober and I didn't know what they were doing, it would just seem like <clears throat> gobbledygook reading the big book and, and the 12 by 12. And I'd, I'd read what they were, what those words said, but not, it took a while. It took about three years and I did work the steps to my best of my ability at two years, but I've had to work them over and over and over. And the way I do it now is I, I co-sponsor someone, you know, that's got as much time as me and will work the steps together. Or when I'm going through the steps with a new girl that I'm sponsoring, I work the steps with them. And today I'm, I really have gotten rid of some of my character defects and I have made amends to my children and to my grandchildren. I, you know, my, my grandkids have never seen me drink. Joe is, um, he's 34 years old now and he has three little kids and, and my, um, you know, my, my son's girls are, are grown up and, and I have great grandchildren, you know, and I was the kind of grandma who would drive down I-5 to see kids play um, a soccer game in the mud. And, you know, I because when my kids were growing up, I didn't show up for them. I, I don't think I ever saw a basketball game that my daughter played in or a, or a wrestling match that my son was in. And, and those are things that I'm sorry for. I wasn't present for my kids, but I have been as a, as a grandmother and as a, you know, as an adult. So, you know, I, I still go to, I go to meetings every day now during the pandemic. On Tuesdays, I go to three meetings a day, Wednesdays, a couple. I'm, you know, volunteering at intergroup now that we're open again. I, you know, I, and I, I found out that there's, there's certain things that I'm not great for. I'm, I've tried to be um, a GSR. And for me, I'm just not the, uh, I'm not good at the politics of, of AA. And there's people that are great. We have young people in our program that are really well organized and they're, and they're capable of doing it. And I think in the 12 by 12, it explains that well, that, that you know, we, we have our capabilities. We do, um, you know, some people are good coffee makers. A couple years ago, my husband and I went back to Akron for Founders Day, and we went to the um, King King Street School meeting and heard five brothers, the Hicken brothers, speak. And they, you know, they had been sober, these five guys, for um, between 40 and, and 47 years for the uh, those brothers. And they were still doing coffee maker jobs at their at their meetings. And that's where I've learned, you know, I'm a good coffee maker. I'm a good sponsor. I'm a pretty good treasurer because I love counting money. And I, you know, I'm pretty honest. I, I don't think I've ever stolen any money from my folks and, you know, in, in my meetings. So there's, there's so much. And, and I was just talking to a fella that's having a hard time getting sober. And, and he said, well, how have you changed? And I said, you know, in the, in the big book, it talks, we, we talk about the ninth step promises. And I said, today I'm comfortable in my own skin. I know how to handle situations that used to baffle me. I intuitively know how to, how to do things that would have seemed just overwhelming before. And so today I'm comfortable in my own skin. I'm a great grandmother. I'm you know, I'm, I'm as healthy as I can be with somebody that's, that's done a little bit of damage. But I, I just encourage you, if you're new, get a home group, get a sponsor, go to meetings and don't drink between meetings and work this program to the best of your ability and, and life will get better. So it's just, thank you for listening to me. And I hope that, that you join us on this road to happy destiny. Thanks. Bye.